Hello, and welcome back to Video Games. I'm Tim Rogers. Thank you for watching Kotaku.com. Pokemon Sword and Shield arrive soon on the Nintendo Switch. It's the Gran Turismo of Pokemon Go clones. You might have heard some nasty rumors or confounding conspiracies surrounding this game. I have played it for about 20 hours at this point. I love it! Nintendo has graciously granted me permission to make a 6-minute video consisting of clips of less than 20 seconds each. Wow! I hope they're okay with a couple of freeze frames. Oh, it says I am allowed a maximum of 10 screenshots. Yank's collar lets out steam sound effect. Oh, sorry, that was a stage direction. <laughs> Nintendo has given me a list of 31 Pokemon that I am allowed to use in this video. Curiously, that list includes the evolved form of one particular new Pokemon, though not its unevolved form. I had that unevolved form visible in my party for about 70% of the battles I fought. When a video game publisher's embargo backs me against the wall, I know of only one opportunity for relief. You, the viewer. So I asked you, on Twitter, to ask me your hottest fire-type questions. So without further whatever this is, allow me to present everything you want to know about Pokémon Sword and Shield. Stay tuned for essential information such as how long to Pikachu, what does the tea Pokémon taste like, can you pet the dead-eyed corgi thing? It's another thrilling installment of the Game Liker's Tweet Bag. Only on Kotaku.com. 304 of you asked me questions, so I- Okay, look, I'm sorry. The embargo limitations prevented me from answering most of your relevant questions. And most of the rest of your questions were terrible, I'll admit. I enjoy doing this Q&A exercise for my videos sometimes because the challenge of sifting through the nonsense to find the relevant questions appeals to me. This time, unfortunately, we're going to have to dial it up to full nonsense. About 50 of you made a joke about Brexit. I promise you, I was planning to make a joke about Brexit in whatever video I ended up making. After looking at my Twitter mentions, I don't feel so original anymore. Though Pokemon Sword and Shield's Galar region is based on England, no, there is no Brexit. The richest witnessable Britishism is purely vocabularic. Citizens often describe objects or concepts as brilliant or massive. They refer to the field inside the Pokemon Stadium I'm not allowed to show you as a pitch. Your inadequate, talentless, unremarkable, grandly deluded best friend next door neighbor rival character says, see you at mine, instead of see you at my house. Clearly, a British person typed this. If I tried to type this, it'd come out all American. Weirdly, in the Galar region, they still call Pokemon trainers, Pokemon trainers. Does nobody get confused? Doesn't that just make it sound like they're talking about the Pokemon's shoes? If it were up to me, they'd call them Pokemoners. The England in Pokemon Sword and Shield is not what the English would call a proper Briton. It's more like the Briton in the imagination of a guy whose wife had once considered studying abroad in, like, Newcastle, and then decided that as long as an airplane is getting involved, she might as well just go to Paris. Like, the people in Pokemon Sword and Shield worship the memory of a legendary armored Dragon Questian hero Night Guy. And the League Champion dresses like a king. And his lead Pokemon is a Charizard. That's pretty much a dragon. Wait, am I even allowed to show him? Uh, if you're seeing him on the screen right now, that means I got out my protractor, reread the embargo information, and calculated that I was, in fact, allowed to show him. On the one hand, one of the new Pokemons is literally just a cup of tea. On the other hand, where's the queen? Where's the clown-like Prime Minister? The only visible authority figure is the Pokemon League Commissioner, who looks like he's LARPing a PlayStation 2 Football Manager game. I'm not allowed to show you him because the embargo restrictions prohibit me from showing anything that happens inside or outside of a Pokemon gym or stadium. Take my word for it when I say I find him sufficiently English. A lot of you wanted to know if I liked the wild area. Of course I do. All you gotta do is glance at the dog ears in any one of my Lonely Planet guides to know that I can't stay away from a wild area. It's like a Dragon Quest game for the Dreamcast. I mean that as an extreme compliment. 
I'm sorry if that sounded really snippy. I love the Dreamcast, man. You know what it reminds me of, and this actually was not a Dreamcast game, is uh, Virtua Quest by Sega. It was for the PlayStation 2. Did anybody play that? Remember that? The whole graphical vibe, the flow, kind of reminds me of that. I mean, actually, I really do like the wild area. There's just all sorts of Pokemon everywhere. It feels unpredictable, wonderful, magical. It feels Pokemon. You get little news bulletins on your in-game smartphone that tell you when such and such event is happening. And every time you go there, it's the Pokemon are different. It's simple, rustic, and classy. It feels like they learned something meaningful from Pokemon Go. Whereas with Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, it seemed like what they had learned from Pokemon Go was that people liked throwing Pokeballs at the screen. Another hot button issue raised by a whole one of the 304 question askers pertains to the combat system. That one from amongst you seriously wanted to know. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, have Pokemoners finally trucked up to the point where they're confident directly attacking wild Pokemon themselves? It saddens me to report, no. Despite one of its versions being named literally after a deadly bladed weapon, Pokemon Sword and Shield does not let you punch wild Pokemon, much less slash them with a sword. Like an insipid coward, the Pokemoner continues to insist upon cowering behind their imprisoned animals. Many of your questions concerned Wooloo. I have quadruple checked the list of 31 Pokemon I am allowed to show you in my video, and thank God Wooloo is one of them. Many of you mused upon the highly original issue of whether Wooloo was a Pokemon or just a sheep. Many of you noted that in Pokemon Sword and Shield, the residents of fictional England communally consume campsite curry. I understood your concern. You wanted to know if Wooloo is in the curry. It turns out the curry is made of berries, and the Pokemon eat it too, because God forbid we leave the Pokemon out of anything. A kid can't even have a basketball court in their front yard. Because the people are too obsessed with erecting ritualistic, kept animal bloodletting torture pitches instead. Having said that, encouraged by your multitudinous approbation, I sought out a scientific distinction between pocket monster, or Pokemon, and regular animal, or Reguan. The key on my kite string turned out to be this question as to whether Wooloos said their names or simply made sheep sounds. Conventional wisdom has it that a Pokemon tends to speak its name out loud in a frighteningly authentic humanoid voice repeatedly. Regular animals, on the other hand, speak crudely in a manner undeserving of a smooth comic book word bubble. An animal speaks in onomatopoeia. Wooloo converses entirely in a variety of traditional sheep sounds. Therefore, Wooloos are regular animals. In my investigation of the Wooloos obstinate roadblocking behavior in the area of the first town I have made sure I am allowed to show in this video, I concluded that Wooloos' behavior indicates the mindset of a wild, barely domesticated mammal, not that of an obedient Pokemon companion. Further proof of their animal nature lurks inside the insipid, talentless, unremarkable neighbor kid who foolishly fancies himself my rival and even equal, despite possessing not one-tenth of my skill or common sense. I'm gonna bleed you dry, rich boy. I mean, he chose the starter Pokemon that is weakest against my starter Pokemon. He could have taken the fire Pokemon and lit up my grass Pokemon. Instead, he chose the water Pokemon. Watering grass makes it grow, you nimrod. He's always challenging me to foot races and then running away before I can agree, much less bet anything. Join the cross-country team, cowboy. This grandly deluded thorough rube of a child insists on always keeping a Wooloo in his party. Clearly, Wooloo is the choice of fools. I bet his parents gave him a hamster once and told him it was a dog, and he believed them. If we're going to call Wooloo a Pokemon, we might as well call Kukos from the Legend of Zelda series Pokemon. I don't care how you're quote-unquote supposed to pronounce Kukos, by the way. Having been to Birmingham, England and enjoyed many a Balti about town in my younger times, I would rate my knowledge of the Indian curries of the English heartland as 
severe. I know how they love a lamb. Therefore, I had my hypothesis. Wulu is in somebody's curry somewhere in Pokemon Sword or Shield. Thus inspired, I set out on a quest for proof. Did I find it? It turns out I'm not allowed to tell you. Also, I just ran out of time. I guess I'll have to make another video about this game later. Until then, I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku.com